Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Philadelphia Catholic League Championship Night. It's a doubleheader here on SFBN through the Penn Sports Network. My name's Bob Long, alongside me, Andrea Peterson, and a live look at the Archbishop Wood student section and Lansdale Catholic packing it to the gills as well. Andrea is with me here, 2015 Naismith Coach of the Year and Coach yes. of Newman Goretti. Thrilled to have you alongside. Thank you for having me. We're about to put the ball up. Let's get it underway here from Penn. And we'll tell you about the starting lineups here in both of these teams as we're now underway. Lansdale Catholic 22-2 on the year, led by Gabby Casey, Philadelphia Catholic League MVP. She'll wear number 15. Sanaya Littlejohn, the point guard. Here's an open three from the wing that goes down. It's Nadia Yamola, averaging just seven points per game. That's, that's a nice screen on the wing for her to get wide open right there. We're gonna see a lot of that tonight when they move the ball pretty well. Deja Evans gets a touch for Archbishop Wood and she'll let it go. Hell ball situation will keep it here to take you through the rest of that Archbishop Wood lineup. Kara Meredith, you see her there in the center of your screen, number 24, averages seven and a half points per game. Emily Naus leads the way with nine and a half. Delaney Finnegan and Ava Renninger. The other two in that starting lineup. But nobody can deal with the size of Evans She's got two offensive rebounds there, but couldn't put it back. I gotta box her out, Bob. Sanaya Littlejohn, she's getting a lot of Division I interest because of her ability to do just that, get to the basket and distribute. There's Casey for three. She's headed to St. Joe's next year. 21 points per contest, nearly a double-double per contest as well with nine rebounds. A dream start for Lansdale Catholic, who might just have the entire school here <laughs> from a fan base and Absolutely. a student section perspective. Their student section is going crazy right now. Chat. There's the silencer, and it comes from Kara Merida. You know, what gets deep into that paint and they penetrate and kick, they can be deadly from the three-point line. As a team, just about 35% from three on the year. Not a lot of teams can boast that across the Catholic League or the state. Casey, that's a college range three. You see what they did there as well. They put the big out there on her. Deja Evans, will that continue against Casey out on the perimeter? Now gets a touch. That's Meredith and now Deja Evans. It looks like kind of on the defensive end, they're just leaving Deja outside, sinking in the paint. It's a Princeton-style offense that Archbishop Wood runs. Creates a great look. Deja Evans didn't draw any iron. Good effort there on the offensive glass, but Lansdale Catholic will get the ball right back. Crusaders led by fifth-year headman Eric Gidney. 83 and 34 in his first five years with the program, including the first trip to a state title. That was just last year, and it was this very contest. Archbishop Wood victorious in that one. Off ball. Point of emphasis, Andrew, I'm sure you've seen it. The screens, you've got to be set. <laughs> yes, with Archbishop Wood, both teams right here have to be set on these screens, whether they're away from the ball or on the ball screens. Archbishop Wood, all four girls, really throw Evans into that mix as well. They can really handle the basketball well. They play that slow, deliberate, back cut style offense, try to create good looks. That's a good look that won't go. And it's Lansdale Catholic basketball. Mike McDonald, two of three, two, uh, uh, two and three in five trips to the PCL Finals. Archbishop Wood is a program in this building 14 of the last 17 years. That is remarkable. There's a back cut inside, and it's Gabby Casey. Uses the rim as protection against the shot blocker yes. Evans. Looks like Wood got miscommunication there on the screen, whether they were switching or not. Casey has five early ones. They're just gonna let Deja hang out there. Inside they go and a foul is called. Delaney Finnegan, she had the position inside. The foul goes against Olivia Bacella. Nine points per contest. Bacella though, five three-point shots in a win against Archbishop Carroll in the Catholic League semifinals. Yes, Olivia Bacella can really shoot the ball. She has NBA range. She has to guard her from every position all the way up. 
Evans, no double come, so she'll take it herself, but that's really good defense inside. A hell of ball once again, the third of the contest. But boy, I think a big key, if they're not gonna double down below, is, is Jada Helm gonna be able to stand up to Deja Evans? She's done well so far. And it is a giveaway. Kara Meredith had trouble and poked away right by that Lansdale Catholic bench. This is game one of two here tonight. Lansdale Catholic and Archbishop Wood on the girls' side and on the boys' side, a familiar tale. Roman Catholic and Newman Garetti. Here's Casey with a touch at the elbow. And again, they put the longer six foot two, Deja Evans on Casey. So Casey gets to the hoop and she's fouled. Two shots coming. She does a really good job penetrating, especially with, you know, drawing Deja out on her. Um, you know, I think Lansdale also has a shooter out in the corner. Somebody spots up opposite. I know Bacella's usually really good at that. Casey, 84% from the line on the year. Gabby Casey's very good on both ends of the floor. She's tough to guard and a really smart defender. And she's MVP of our league. <laughs> And an early 10-3 cushion on seven from Gabby Casey. Ava Renninger, good cross to get to a good spot. Couldn't hit it. What a job to trace that down there. Renninger, the guard, with her back to the basket. A deep three. Here comes Tania Littlejohn. It's a good look for Casey. Archbishop Wood scrambles to the basketball well. This is tough though, and she's one on one. Couldn't hit it. Really good defense inside by number 20, Delaney Finnegan. It's a good defensive stop. Finnegan now with the basketball and Wood into the offensive set. Evans, open three for Naus. And a grab is gonna be called. That's gonna go against number 24, Kara Meredith. That is the second personal foul on Kara Meredith. So in her place will come Alexa Windish. She's a 50% three point shooter, but only averages four points per contest. So in limited action, she can still spot up and beat you. I'm gonna be honest, I think everyone on that bench from Wilkes shoot threes. <laughs> Doesn't matter who you put in over there. Pacella had trouble with the handle. Double team in a tough spot. And there's yeah. Renninger. Ava Renninger. Good finish. Lansdale's doing a really good job of pushing this ball in transition. Wood has to get back. And they're rewarded for it. Olivia Pacella picked up there right where she left off in the <laughs> semifinal. I'm telling you, she could shoot the ball. You gotta guard her. As soon as she gets off that bus, she better guard her. Her range is the zip code here <laughs> yes. in University City. It is. There's a deep three. That one's no good. Sanaya Littlejohn. Bates now puts it off the glass. Really good defense by Renninger. Renninger with four rebounds. One of the leading rebounders on this Archbishop Wood team. And you can see why. Yes, absolutely. Even the diminutive stature, she gets in there and mixes it up, unafraid. They let that one go. Three is well long. Perhaps the juices are flowing, a foul called against Archbishop Wood. I always believe the first couple minutes of the game, I tell my kids in a big environment like this at the Plester, you know, the nerves are always flying, right? Lansdale's first time here, Wood has been here before, but I think they need to get those nerves out and everything's gonna fall into play here. Another look at that three from the corner by Vichella just a few minutes Gotta ago. Gotta find her in transition. 1.44 to go, first quarter. Lansdale Catholic playing really well, moving the ball down the floor with pace and creating looks as a result. Here's Helm. She'll go with her back to the basket. Guarded by Naus. That's well long. But Little John's going to come up with it, and she is fouled. Lansdale's doing a very good job of down screen, cross screen, getting the girls open. 
Renninger was in a good position there, Andrea, but really just wasn't looking at the ball and it didn't tick off the rim. That's an advantage offense more often than not. No, absolutely. And I think with Lansdowne, like I said before, they have young ladies who can penetrate. You can't leave them open on the, on the outside and you have Gabby Casey who can kind of do it all. This is Sanaya Littlejohn. She's able to light it up. 11 points per contest with six rebounds and five assists. Goes one of two that time at the strike. And Sanaya Littlejohn's still young. She's only a sophomore. Lansdale Catholic won the first two, uh, matchup of these two teams, the only time they've faced each other this regular season, by a score of 49-31. That was Archbishop Wood's only loss in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Renninger, a tough shot with the left hand, just couldn't get the roll. Now with under a minute to go, Lansdale Catholic, they've pushed it the whole day. Certainly not holding for the last shot. That's Jada Helm. She just went coast to coast on that one. Timeout. Mike McDonald, largest lead for Lansdale Catholic. The Crusaders in their first trip to the Palestra for the Catholic League final. Unabashed, ready to let it fly and doing so with efficiency. Here's a look at Eric Gidney and the Crusader huddle. What do you say in this moment here, Andrea? Your team is rolling, you're in a big atmosphere. They've responded the way you want them to. What's the message? I think all you keep saying is, you know, keep your foot on the gas. You gotta keep going. In an environment like this, and against a team from Archbishop Wood, anything could turn at any time. You know, hitting some threes, getting downhill. So in games like this, you never take your foot off the gas. You keep it going, keep that momentum, never stop. You mentioned going downhill. They had a chance. You just saw the replay with Helm going 94 feet to the cup. Recognizing that Archbishop Wood may be a little slow getting back defensively. Now with 44 seconds left, what are you coming out with if you're Archbishop Wood? Is it a hold for one situation? Or are you trying to find some sort of pin down, find some uh, option offensively before? I think it's either way score. I noticed they took Deja out of the game. Um, I think because what they were doing was just sinking down in the paint. I think, I think they looked to score right here with 43 seconds left because they're down. Running some of their offense, cross screen, down screen. Back screen flares. Here's the dribble drive for now. Gets to a great spot. Just couldn't get it over the front rim. And now Gabby Casey with 20 seconds left. The most likely hold for one shot. Bacella had a big three early in this contest. Casey, three early field goals. She has it now with six, down to five. Casey, if they get it off in time, they will not. So Archbishop Wood gets the stop. They certainly needed that. A chance for Mike McDonald and his team to regroup, but Lansdale Catholic came out firing. A 16-5 lead at the end of one. You've had an opportunity to see both of these teams. Yes. What stands out to, about, to you about both of these squads? They can do a little bit of everything. As I said, Wood, you know, it doesn't matter who they bring in off the bench. I think every player on that bench can shoot uh, from long range. So they're a penetrate kick type of team. You've got to be able to defend the penetration, also defend play one-on-one -on because -one, what they want to do is get downhill and kick. Lansdale Catholic, a little bit different style of play. They're going to look to score off their offense right away, and they're going to put the ball in Gabby's hands, Sanaya hands, or Jada's hands, and look to attack the rim. I think coming out in the second half, Wood needs to attack the rim a little bit more. They're struggling from the outside, but I think attacking a little bit more will help um, pick up those fouls a little bit, get these guys in some foul trouble. It is a team that has the size advantage, certainly with Deja Evans in there. and She's had some decent looks, but hasn't been able to finish them. I think once you see that first one go through the cylinder, you see a look inside that wood Absolutely. huddle and now over to the Lansdale Catholic huddle. That'll be a big thing for them. Our buddy Huck Palmer does all the statistics for the Catholic League and he's sitting right next to me here. Gabby Casey with seven points, three rebounds and two assists already filling it up. And how about Sanaya Littlejohn, the 5'9 point guard. She leads both teams with four rebounds. Yes. It's always the little ones that always get the most rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> Archbishop Wood, they've made their bones on their defense this year. 
Lost a, a key member, actually their leading scorer, Allie Fleming. Yes. Just eight games into the season. So how have they gotten back to this point? Lost just the one Catholic League game. There's Casey through traffic. Two shots coming. Renninger tried to take the charge, but I think you'll see on the replay here, a little slide, heck of a crossover as well. Stepped in a little too late. But with Fleming out, defense was the calling card. They averaged points allowed of 34 points per contest. Lansdale Catholic put up 16 in the first eight minutes. Yeah, it's always a shame to see a young lady go down. She was doing tremendous. Uh, tremendous young lady, great for this team, and I can see her over there cheering these guys on, and I think it keeps the morale going uh, for Wood. We talked to Mike McDonald about that, and the fact that she has been just as engaged, if not more so, in this new role. He feels like he's got another coach on the bench. Of course, wishes her the best in her recovery. Naus, a little short. That's a great look, though. Absolutely. Off the ball screen. I think if they attack a little bit more, um, Deja faces up there, she attacks the rim. First minute of play here in the second quarter. Bob Long, Andrea Peterson here for the Catholic League final. There's a deep three. Jada Helm. She is a transfer from Abington, Andrea, and she comes from averaging 15 and 12 there. Well, now it's about 12 and nine here. But she has assimilated so well into that role and corrals that defensive board. Yeah, she's really filled a great role for Lansdale. Um, add a little bit of depth for them with her being added to the roster. An open three. That one's a little long, but again, a great luck. That time it came off the hands of Nadia Yamola, who got the game scoring started. Nows with a touch on the wing. Here's Evans. They haven't committed doubles down there, and it hasn't cost him to this point. Dribble drive, got to a great spot in the lane. Kind of shot put it up there, though, and it came up short. Sanaya Littlejohn. Here's Gabby Casey, so quick off the bounce. Big board there by Evans. There goes the post right there. Kara Meredith. Evans, and she tried to one-hand it. That's so tough in tight spaces like that. Casey, she'll try it again. Archbishop Wood to slow things down here, 20 to five. He didn't see one fall through. <laughs> like I said, once they get one to fall through here, I think it changes the game. There's a three from the corner. That's is. gonna bank its way home. Kara Meredith. It's just what they needed. Sometimes it only takes one. Meredith, 40% from three on the year. Now some pressure right at the timeline. Back cut inside. That's really good. What a job inside by Yamola. Patience amidst the shot blockers. Renninger is open for three. That one's well long. Lansdale Catholic students have packed this place here tonight, and they're letting Archbishop Wood hear about it. Yeah, they're all the way up there. Lansdale's done a very good job tonight of finding an open player. And constantly moving without the ball. Casey through traffic. What a finish. And she gets where she needs to go, Andrea, with pace, but also purpose and under control. Evans, you can count that one and one. Big bucket for the Vikings. I think Deja needed that. Right here, she makes this foul shot. And again, no double. 
which allows her to get her where she needs to go. And that's an elite finish. I think sometimes with the double down when you play wood, it's a little dangerous because you double down, they kick out, they start hitting threes. Yep, absolutely right. Brings that up a lot quicker than twos. Talking to Eric Gidney before the contest here today, he drew a lot of parallels. Lansdale Catholic and Archbishop Wood, and he said, listen, Bob, imitation is the highest form of flattery. And when he came in five years ago, Lansdale Catholic, kind of a mid-tier Philadelphia Catholic League program, he wanted to change the culture. He saw what Archbishop Wood did, and a off-ball screen will send it the other way. He saw how Mike McDonald built this program, and he said, I want to do it a similar way. They run a five-out offense in many ways similar to the Princeton style that Archbishop Wood runs, and they found themselves in the state title game last year against Archbishop Wood, so it was kind of a culmination of, of those efforts over the years, and now they have a chance to win their first Hubcap Catholic League That's championship right. in program history. Absolutely. Lansdale's done a very good job this year. Um, you know, like you said, they they beat Wood on their home floor earlier in the year, and to see him here tonight, they've done a fantastic job throughout the year maintaining that. And out of the timeout here, 331 to play. Look at some of the key plays that got us to this moment. But from a standpoint of Archbishop Wood, it's not just Allie Fleming. Of course, that was the unexpected loss. But the folks that they graduated last year, Bree Bowen, who's playing her basketball at the University of Delaware right now, as well as Ryan Allen, who this is going to be a star yes. at Vanderbilt, certainly a star in the making there. Caitlin Oriole from the year before playing at Villanova. They've had some tremendously talented teams. Deja Evans was part of a lot of those teams, yes. and she's got five quick ones in succession. I think if she could take off here, it closes the gap right here in this score. Yeah, big three-minute stretch. This could go one way or the other. An 11-point contest right now. And I love that look coming out of the timeout from Mike McDonald, no surprise. And that one thrown away. Lanzo Catholic back pretty well defensively. It's a college range three and it's good. Kara Meredith, her second triple of the quarter. That's a transition three. You gotta get back on defense. Helm to the top of the key. Now here's Casey. Tough shot. Foot on the line. And hit the rim three times. Wouldn't go. There's an ebb and a flow to these games, particularly here at the Palestra. They seem to be even quicker. Yes. Para oh, Meredith. <laughs> Four threes on the contest, third of the quarter. Back to a five-point game. You can't let Wood get hot from the three-point line. Dribble drive, what a look inside for Little John, who maybe wasn't ready for it. Sanaya Little John into the body of Meredith. Tough shot, and Meredith got a piece. And it's Archbishop Wood basketball, contact along the baseline, but Casey stepped on the line. Another look, that's really good there by Merida. One twenty to go. Finnegan, and now Renninger. Ava Renninger gets to a great spot. Couldn't hit that one. Just a simple high ball screen from Evans. Sets up the open shot from the elbow. And not surprised with the way the momentum has shifted in the last few minutes here to see Lansdale Catholic slow it down. Yes. 
That's a deep three. Bacella. <laughs> Olivia Bacella. They're going to find her at all times. Boy, she will let was, it fly. That was a good contest <laughs> as well. Big time shot. More than halfway to her five three point total from the semifinals. Hold for the last shot here. Down to seven. Down to four, Renninger. It's gonna be an open look, but she gave it up. That's gonna be the end of the, well, they did call a double dribble, but I think they're just gonna wave that off. That's gonna be the end of the first half. So it was Lansdale Catholic dominating early. Archbishop Wood out of that timeout just a few minutes ago, brought it all the way back to five. But Lansdale Catholic, the students dressed in white, they've had a big impact on the game and a late three by Bacella makes it an eight point contest. I think it was a great half right there. I think that, you know, obviously Mike, both teams will make some adjustments in the second half. It's a close game now. I think they both come out and make those adjustments, whatever it is. You know, on Woods end, I think they're set on a little bit. Um, you know, be able to get to the rim, like I said early on. Um, and Lansdale, like you said, slowing the pace down a little bit now that they're kind of, Wood had that little bit of a run. So it'll be, you know, interesting to see how they come out in the second half. Lightning quick halves here at the high school level. Under 10 minutes before we get going again. But the hope is to get Josh Verlin on for a quick halftime interview. Our buddy from City of Basketball Love. So stay with us, folks, here on the Catholic League final put on by our friends at the Sports Fan Base Network. And, of course, the Penn Sports Network doing the broadcast production today. Thank you. We've come a long way since they laid a new foundation for us. A foundation for a new standard. Striving for community and excellence over the course of a century. The ball was set in motion by those who came before us. Now, we stay in motion. The potential in every one of us is limitless, and we won't be slowed down. We're building power for game time, for the classroom, for our future. This is the opportunity of a lifetime, and every one of us, is prepared to do our part. Because we aren't just powering the next 100 years of champions. We are the next 100 years of leaders and the next 100 years of game changers, role models, and pioneers. The responsibility to lead those who follow is now on our shoulders. We power the next 100. And the next 100 years starts now. Today I'm here with punter Ben Krim, who's going to teach me a little bit about kicking the ball. What are the two most important things about getting off a good punt? First thing's just operation time and going quick, but then making sure the ball's flat when you hit it and then extending your leg so you're making contact when your leg's locked out. I might need a visual demonstration of a visual learner. Dang, okay, nice. I'm excited. You just do like leg swings. Okay. Wow, you have hip mobility, jeez. Like work on going through and then when you go through, like point your toe so okay. it's flat still. You swing through. So I can take a second, turn it. Wow, this is stressful. First one might be rough. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, there you go. That's decent. I think I can do better, though. I think I can do better. If you pour your toe, it will spiral. Okay. Yeah, there. Maybe a little more height. Okay. Wow. I feel that in my legs. Boy, that was upside down. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. That was pretty good. Nice. Wow. I'm not used to kicking a ball that's shaped like that. That's weird. Just out of curiosity, would you mind holding to see if I can kick a field goal? Sure. Okay, here we go. I think I can do better. I think that was that was good. But I think I can do better. Decent. Should we move back to the 30? Wow. Oh, this looks really far. Go, 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 go. Mm, okay, that's okay. Go, go. Mm, it keeps dropping. <laughs> so I'll work on that. Maybe kicker is not in my future. Maybe punter is. Punter might be, yeah. Yeah, you think? Mm -hmm. You think I can make the roster? Possibly. Maybe yeah. behind you, obviously. Cool. Well, check, check on Saturday and see if I'm on there. Okay. 
I think my field goals need a little bit more work, but I might have a shot at backing up Ben at punter. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Young Quakers is purposely a sports-based youth development program because we really want the young Quakers to take life skills from the program. So we want them to be building skills on the court, but really being able to transfer all those skills off the court. So all those skills like teamwork and determination, perseverance, communication, all the things that they get to see their big Quakers model every day. You know, young Quakers isn't just a, a lesson for the kids, it's also a lesson for us. Um, you know, we, we gain a lot of insight seeing how impactful we can be with our with our voices and just our presence it makes us really appreciate you know what, what what we have going on here in the program. They're a great team. They're good players, and they're also when I see that it makes it seem like they're like really good players. I learned how to like that throw a layup. I learned how to dribble the ball between my legs. Um, I learned a lot of stuff. Young Quakers is always looking for support from alumni. Um, we are part of a larger university-assisted community school after-school program, so we're looking for support, you know, in all of our programming, whether that's donations, whether that's coming back and volunteering, or just spreading the word about the program. Halftime here at the Palestra. Bob Long and Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love. He is our guest here today. Does a wonderful job covering the high school game, the college game, all throughout the city of Philadelphia and beyond. And Josh, no place you'd rather be here than tonight, huh? No, I always say if you're a Philadelphia sports fan, this is the place you have to see on a Monday night in February. No better place to be. So let's talk about this opening half here where Lansdale Catholic controlled things certainly early. Took a 19-point lead and all of a sudden here comes Archbishop Wood right back to where they expect to be, which is in shooting distance and in, in, in range to win a basketball game here and win yet another Catholic League title. How did they do it? Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at Lansdale Catholic, the ability for them to get scoring from all five positions on the floor is what really played that big part in that early lead. Nadia Yemela coming out, hitting a couple threes early, really helped settle them down. And then obviously you know Wood isn't going to go away. Kara Meredith, one of the few who can really light it up from deep, gets going there, hits three straight, and we've got ourselves a ball game. Second half adjustments here for your Archbishop Wood. You saw they made a few adjustments out of that timeout, came out with a lot of energy and hit those shots, but what do you think they'll need to do if they want to raise another hub cap here tonight? Yeah, I think the biggest key is stopping Gabby Casey. The St. Joe's commit, Lansdale Catholic senior, all-time leading scorer at the school, has been able to get off where she wants off the dribble, get down into the teeth of the defense, and break things down. I think Wood needs to stop her at the point of attack to then make it easier for them to guard the rest of the team. I think one of the reasons this has been such an excellent, well-played game and fun to watch is because you look at Eric Gidney, fifth year here with Lansdale Catholic, and he told us that imitation is the highest form of flattery, right? That he saw what was happening in Warminster with Mike McDonald over those many years and thought, hey, I can create a culture similar to that. They run that five-out offense. They, they do what Wood does, and you're looking at mirror images of each other here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at programs in the, you know, in the District 1 region, right, not in Philadelphia, but in those suburbs that want to make a name for themselves. Wood's done it on the girl's side. Wood's done it on the boy's side. There's certainly a path to be followed. When you get a Gabby Casey, that transcendental star, she's lifted the entire mantle of this program. And I'm very curious to see where it goes over the next few years. We'll take a quick break. That's Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love. You'll hear from him again at halftime of the boys' contest. Roman Catholic Newman Garetti. Quick couple of words as to what we'll expect to see, though, in that one tonight. I think we're going to see some fireworks in that one. These are the two proudest programs in the league. I'm not expecting anybody to quit until the final buzzer rings, and I'm expected a two-point game either way. Josh Verlin, our guest here on the halftime show from the Palestra, and what's been a great game. Josh, enjoy the second half. Andrea Peterson will join us momentarily.
My name's Annie Bartos, and I'm a member of the Penfield hockey team. When I was a kid, I lost my twin brother, Jack, to childhood cancer, and I started Golden September, a childhood cancer awareness project to help raise awareness and funds for childhood cancer. My goal is not to raise awareness just in September, but to grow gold year round. In 2021, multiple other field hockey teams decided to step up, fight childhood cancer. And this year, some teams here at Penn are also joining me to help grow gold. In 2021 alone, we were able to raise over a million dollars for childhood cancer. Now I'm asking you in your team, club, organization, and school to step up and help grow gold. We might be on all different teams, but at the end of the day, we're on one team to help our kids survive and thrive. So thank you for helping me grow gold to beat childhood cancer. Welcome back inside the Palestra. It's the home of the Philadelphia Catholic League twice a year. The semifinals on the boys' side, the second to last Wednesday, often in February, and then, of course, the finals here the last Monday in February. The girls' title game has been a fantastic contest thus far. Bob Long, Andrea Peterson alongside. And a look here as Lansdale Catholic takes the floor. 9 of 18 from the floor and 5 of 9 from three-point range. Andrea Peterson, that's going to be tough to beat if they can replicate that again. Yes, absolutely. What's been the key to Lansdale Catholic's success? I think they're moving the ball well. I think they're attacking the rim. They drew a couple of fouls there early on, um, and then Wood had to make a few adjustments. Adjustments certainly were made by Archbishop Wood. Went on a 14-5 run. Got themselves right back into this game. It was down to five, a late three by Olivia Bacella. I think if Deja could take off here in the second half, it's going to change the game. Bacella had given Lansdale Catholic the eight-point cushion with less than a minute to go. And now Sanaya Littlejohn, in many ways the conductor of this Lansdale Catholic offense. Casey, a foul is called. And they're going to call that against Casey. Sending it the other way, the off arm was the reason for that call. Sometimes you can get away with a little discard, not here. Good crew here tonight. Alexa Latimer, Bill Schneider, and Dana Cole are three officials. And a grab is called against Little John, so that's quickly the second team foul against Lansdale Catholic. Two quick fouls. And our guy Dan Hoban, who does the public address for all the Catholic League title and semifinal games here at the Palestra, announced that that is her third personal foul, if I heard that correctly. Lansdale Catholic has not gone deep. Archbishop Wood has gone two or three deep into the bench here today. Ava Renninger, no. Offensive rebound put back. Kara Meredith, what a game for her tonight. She's playing a really good game tonight, crashing the boards, doing a little bit of everything. That's her 14th point of the night. Four of five from beyond the arc. Now Evans gets involved. Evans now wants the ball. Delaney Finnegan. Dribble drive by Renninger. Great look inside. Yes. And it's back to a four-point contest. Looking out of the locker room, a whole different team looking to penetrate kick and a little more ball movement. Evans got the block on one end, Andre, and the finish on the other. An excellent assist by Ava Renninger. Here's Jada Helm. 
Drives into traffic. Second block on as many possessions. Helm couldn't finish on that one. There she is, Deja Evans making her presence felt. Nearly a giveaway. Renninger, what a job to get the ball back. That three, no good. Rebound again by Kara Meredith. And it's the offensive glass for Archbishop Wood that carried the day here in the second half. Wood came out of that locker room ready to play. Two point ball game. And a 6 0 run to start the second half. They rise here at the Palestra. The Archbishop Wood faithful. There they are. It's a blackout on the Archbishop Wood side of things. No panic though in that Lansdale Catholic huddle. Here's another look at that last play, Renninger. That's a beautiful dish inside. And Meredith, more of the same. Wood definitely came out more aggressive in the second half than they were in the first. It makes a world of difference. Talking to both of these coaches, the message was clear. When you get to these championship games, you're going to have to defend for longer. A lot of times, longer possessions. Mistakes loom a lot larger. There's just no room to let up here. And you saw that. Lansdale Catholic goes 50% from the field, better than 50% from three. And less than three minutes into the second half, it's Wood that comes out with the aggression and the execution. And it's a two-point contest, just like that. Here's the Catholic League MVP, Gabby Casey. Casey wants the basketball. Double comes on her. Helm. She's shown a pension for getting to the lane. Little John, a step back three. And maybe a little quick that time from Lansdale Catholic out of the timeout. Archbishop Wood can tie or take the lead. It's another great look for Deja Evans. The assist to Ava Renninger. So the adjustment in the locker room was pick and roll right there. Deja being more aggressive attacking the rim on that roll. Casey, what a move. A little short though on the runner. Emily Nouse. Got to get back in transition. Dangerous pass there. And Meredith will slow things down. Here's Renninger. She has had a great game so far. And the run, no surprise, coincided with her going off. It's Ava Renninger. Wood leads for the first time. Wow. Now Lansdale Catholic, it is an experienced team here. They went to the state final last year. Run their set. Things are okay if you're a Crusader fan. Just got to get good looks like that. Excellent offense in the half court. Gabby Casey for two. You know, Gabby cutting back door right there after she gave the ball up. You know, with a little bit of weak side help, she realized there was no one there. Little John so good on the ball. And they coerce the steal. Jada Helm got her hand on it. There's the three. But Cella couldn't hit that one. Ava Renninger, no numbers here for Archbishop Wood. So cerebral with the ball. Great look. And another offensive rebound, but now gave it away. Dribble drive. Count it. And what? Olivia Bacella. One more look. Oh. I think she had her fruit moving there. That's a tough call right there. Uh, Mike's a little, little frustrated over there. I can see that. His feet were still moving a little bit. 50-50 calls, always tough. 
Could go either way, right? Stuff in the me moment with the ref sees. Yep. I know the coach in you, though. Yes. <laughs> you want that? that when that's it's, a tough one. When you want it when it's your girl attacking <laughs> the room. You want it going the other way when you're on defense. Bacella. It's easier when you see it on replay. <laughs> sure is. Bacella gives Lansdale Catholic the lead again. Finnegan. Open three for Kara Meredith. How about the night for Good her? Good ball movement right there. Bob, when they move that ball well, it gets the whole defense to shift. Extra pass. Bacella for the answer. You got it. Oh, let's play some basketball. Here we go. Catholic League final. Archbishop Wood, Lansdale Catholic. Big time players. It's going to come down to a defensive game here in the last two minutes, fourth quarter. Evans double came on her. Now's for three. It's the one player that really hasn't yet gotten going here for Archbishop Wood. A knockdown three point shooter all year long. There's Renninger with a steal. It's one on three. She'll pull up. Bang! Punch for punch. It's like a three point shootout right here. Shouldn't surprise anybody. Nope. Both these teams really good all year long from behind the arc. And not just one girl that can do it either. Looks like they're trying to deny Bacella the ball now. This is Bacella. Jada Helm, she's taking one from beyond the arc. That time tried to get through traffic. Last touch by Helm. Ava Renninger first on the floor for Archbishop Wood to coerce the turnover. Here's another look, and it's just so difficult to cross over in traffic like that. Absolutely. It looks like it went off it just hit Deja's foot. She tried to regain possession and lost it. And a good no call on the kick there as yes. well. Right? There's no kicking motion, no unnatural motion with the foot of Evans. Why not? Kara Meredith, that one's no good. But Renninger chases it down, Evans to the hoop. And a blocking foul will be called. We'll see whether this is on the floor. No, they're gonna give her in the act of shooting. Let's get another look here. That's a great look. I don't know. I don't know. In the act? Not in, I don't think it's in the act of shooting. Yeah. I think it's on the floor the, for sure. I think it was a good them. call, but it's on the floor. Yep. Block, certainly the right call. You said it best, though. We get a look at replay, <laughs> yes. and they don't. Yes. A lot easier to be us, Andrea. It is. It's crazy to see this side of it when you can see the replay. Yep. What a great crew we have here tonight. Alexa Latimer, Bill Schneider, Dana Cole. Score was 27 to 19 at the end of two quarters. And if Evans can put this one through the cylinder, it'll be 19 points for Archbishop Wood in the eight minutes of the third quarter alone. Like I said earlier, I think Wood did a good job of coming out of the locker room, made some changes with that pick and roll. Deja got more involved. And then Wood uh, lands down right here. I think you'll start to see um, Gabby take over a little bit here. Delaney Finnegan, the all ball defender for Casey. There's a deep three. Evans really starting to dominate. Nice catch by Meredith. Finnegan, she wants it back. And with 15 seconds to play, it's great discipline by the Vikings of Archbishop oh, Wood. Shot. Down under six, here's Meredith. Emily Naus got the defender in the air and hits it. Emily Naus, a big time to hit a big three. Yes, it's a big time shot right there at the end of the third quarter. And the Archbishop Wood student section is Going loving crazy. it. Crazy. Rightly so. That's a 21 to eight third quarter. Capped off by that right there. 
Well, it's a game of ebbs and flows. We said it once. There's the ebb. You know there's going to be a flow. You know that Lansdale Catholic has another run left in him. Yes. I think they're due for it right here. Like I said, Gabby, Sanaya, Olivia, and Jada um, right here. It's only a five-point game with eight minutes left. Anything can happen in, in basketball. I wonder if they don't start running half-court action specifically for Gabby Casey. And give Archbishop Wood credit for defending against it the way they have. But it's been a lot more Little John on the ball. And you know why? She's excellent. She's garnering high Division I interest because of her ability to really play with that ball like it's a yo-yo on a string. Yes. But I wonder if it's not more Gabby Casey on the ball creating. And even if that's driving to, to kick. I think the ball in her hands. Yeah, putting her ball in her hands, I agree completely. A little bit more. What she did in the first half, she had the ball in her hands a little bit. Um, going back to that adjustment, just letting her, you know, MVP of the league, letting her take this game over Division One commit going to St. Joe's. I think she takes the game over right here. The road for both of these teams to get here. Archbishop Carroll was standing in the way for Lansdale Catholic. The Lady Crusaders impressive in their semifinal victory. For Archbishop Wood, it was Deja Evans, who's had a wonderful second half here today, putting in a last second put back to beat Cardinal O'Hara in the semifinal. Nothing like a buzzer beater. Here is Casey, aforementioned. Down by five, start of the fourth quarter, Lansdale Catholic. Let's see what answers they have. Jada Helm hits it. Simple high ball screen creates the open look. So this is where Wood's tough to guard. They're going to run their offense right here. They do a really good job of staying disciplined and work until they get the best shot opportunity. Ava Renninger. Here's Kara Meredith with 19 points in the contest, five rebounds, and five of seven from beyond the arc. Delaney Finnegan drives with purpose. A great that that, answer. That was that corner kick being able to penetrate when someone dives. You got to get the defense to move. Sanaya Little John. Tough drive, no good. And Emily now pulls it down. What great off on ball defense by Kara Meredith. Taking on the Catholic League MVP and saying, hey, I'll guard her one on one. Six thirty-three to go. Lansdale has to stay disciplined right here, because Wood, when they run their office, they're going to run it all the way through. Like I said, for the best shot opportunity, they're very patient on the offensive end. And that helps you when you're nursing a five-point lead in the fourth quarter, doesn't it? It sure does. You don't need to put on a new cape. You know, you can run the same stuff that you've been running all year long. Limit the number of possessions that remain in this contest, and nearly a steal. Renninger, great look. It's a seven point game, largest lead for Archbishop Wood. Patience, that's what they do very well. And she took advantage of the broken play yes. on the near steal. Jada Helm, there's a double team. What a great Good kick, kick extra pass. Gabby Casey, right when you needed it. Lansdale Catholic not going anywhere. Both these teams are going to fight to the end. And the extra pass there by Little John, that's great vision. Of course, a great pass from the corner by Helm against the double team. Couldn't be more impressed. High level of basketball being played here tonight at a historic venue. Yes. I think both teams doing a really good job. Um, you know, it's going to come down. we got five minutes and 30 seconds left in this fourth quarter. It's going to come down who can defend right here and can Lansdale defend Wood for the next five minutes and 32 seconds. With Ava Renninger's last two, she's got 10 points, six assists, three rebounds, and four steals she has tonight as well. Been disruptive on the defensive end. She's very poised. I think we'll be looking back at that one, that three by Emily Nouse, if Archbishop Wood can win the contest at the end of the third quarter. There's a drive kick baseline. 
So Andrea, you had the chance, I'm sure, many, many times to, to play here, coach here at, on this floor. What is it like when you get to come to the Cathedral of College Basketball? The Philadelphia Catholic League is the best league in the country, hands down. I don't think anyone, there's no debate about that. Playing in this environment right here is unreal for, you know, 15, 16, 17 year olds, especially as females. And, you know, it changes the women's game right here in the PCL. It's a great environment. And then it packs with the, the guys game behind us. Five twenty-three to go, fourth quarter. A big three by Gabby Casey. Right before the timeout, brought Lansdale Catholic back within four. Renninger with patience. She's defended by Sanaya Littlejohn. Delaney Finnegan with her back to the basket. And Archbishop Wood yet to have a touch inside the three-point line. Now Renninger, great luck. Open three. Halfway down. A great look for Emily Naus. Gabby Casey got to the block. That's great defense on the ball. That three is good. Hits Jada Helm. One-point game. Good penetration kick, find the open player. Coming down for a photo finish. Who's gonna hit the big spot in the, uh, the big shot, the big spot, the big moment? Four minutes left. Naus was looking for the cutting Evans. Delaney Finnegan, tough shot, won't go. Great on-ball defense. Here comes Gabby Casey. 20 plus points per contest, a rebound away from a double-double on average per game. The MVP honors here in the Catholic League. Just looking to add one more plaudit to the mantle. And that would be a Catholic League title. This Step would back. help. And now Sun contested on the rebound. You know she can hit that shot, but maybe a little forced. You know, I was gonna say, I think at this point in the game, we gotta look to attack the rim right here, either draw some fouls or just look to get inside that paint. Ava Renninger, there's an open three. And Deja Evans, she is fouled by Casey. She went straight up there and just had the two inch or three inch advantage on Jada Helm. Here's another look here, Andrea. She just, again, that's not over the back. It's just going straight up in the air. I think an interesting fact is, a lot of people don't know, Gabby and Deja played AAU for the last couple of years together. So they're, they're really good friends off, you know, outside of this court. That one's gonna fall. Delaney Finnegan. She really has attacked the rim with purpose here tonight. Yes. Certainly with some contact inside, the, red, the whistles did stay silent there. There hasn't been many fouls called this game. That foul came down low, it goes against Renninger. Deja Evans puts it into the second row. But two shots coming for Olivia Bacella. Yeah, up top certainly clean, and there it's comes Bacella into your living room. <laughs> Pacella, three for four from beyond the arc here tonight. Chance to add a couple more important ones here at the line, and she does just that. It's a great job by Evans to come to the center of the floor, but nearly Dangerous turned it pass. over, yeah? <laughs> That's one there, Mike McDonald's might just say, hey, let's come to a jump stop at the Get the ball and play Yep, get it let's across take it from the timeline. <laughs> you know, as a coach, that a play like that drives you crazy. One point game, Archbishop Wood. 
They have all the history here in the Catholic League. They've been here to the Palestra, 14 of 17 years. Lansdale Catholic here for the first time. Mike McDonald, eighth year head coach at Archbishop Wood, looking for his third Catholic League crown. Eric Gidney, fifth year man for Lansdale Catholic, looking for his first. Coach Gidney has done a really good job with Lansdale Catholic. Like you said, when he first came into the league to now, and you know, he hasn't, after five years, hasn't been a Catholic League championship. And I'll be honest, he has some, you know, young players on his bench that will be a bright future for Lansdale. Timeout called here by Archbishop Wood, and we talk about this a lot on our broadcasts. The timeout, particularly in a late game situation, I know there is no shot clock at the <laughs> high school level, but it's going to be, hey, hey go, go take the ball for 90 seconds against a great defense. That's gonna be tough. So calling a timeout almost resets an internal shot clock for you and allows you to, you know what, hey, we're gonna come out of the timeout, run our set. Now all of a sudden we've run 40 seconds. Hey, you take a timeout, you do it again. Yes. Right, that's a great way, if you're looking to shorten the basketball game, you can use timeouts to do just that. I think it gives you a time to kind of reassess for the next minute at 54, right? So you kind of prepare, like this is what we're doing. We're going to get up, we're going to defend. We need to stop. We get a score. You're looking at what to do. You're talking to your team about how many turn, you know, whose ball it is on the jump ball, how many timeouts you have left, um, making them aware of kind of what's going on with a minute 54 with a one-point ball game. And, of course, you look at the timeouts left, Lansdale Catholic on the big board shows four, uh, two timeouts left, beg your pardon, for Lansdale Catholic, three for Archbishop Wood, and that's important as well because unlike the college game, under a minute, under two minutes, there's no automatic stoppage of the clock after the ball goes through the cylinder. So if you find yourself down, say, more than a possession in the last 20 seconds of yes. the game or less, you, you want to take that timeout to basically prevent the other team from sitting on the ball, holding it for five seconds, and all the while the clock well, I think, runs too, this down. is where, I think we talked about before, this is where the shot clock comes in. I think it makes the game a little more interesting um, when you add the shot clock, right? Because in situations like this, the game has to speed up. And I think it's good for girls basketball, something, you know, I think that is needed to prepare these kids for the next level. A lot of contact inside. The foul call made by Alexa Latimer. Latimer it's, a, it's a good call inside. Here's another look. She'll be coming right at you here. And certainly the off arm was hit. Yes. Two shots coming for Ava Renninger. Renninger 64% from the line on the air. Won't have two bigger ones all season long. Didn't get the shooter's roll. One of two. Two point lead, 100 seconds to go. Philadelphia Catholic League title is on the line. The league's two best go at it. Lansdale Catholic looking to hoist the hub cap for the first time. Jada Helm all the way to the hoop. A what a take. finish. Yes, we know we'll get downhill right there. Tie ball game, minute 15. Now what do you do here if you're Archbishop Wood? Oh, they turn it over. And the foul is called. There's a whistle and only now do they realize that Ava Renninger is called for the foul. Or they might have gotten Nallis, but it's gonna go against Archbishop Wood. What do you do, coach? <laughs> What Two do you do? Two timeouts. Two timeouts. Do you take I 20, think you I think 25, you, and then clock I it? I think you run some clock here. You see how it goes, put the ball in Gabby's hands. You slow it down. You control the pace right here with a minute left. You can ideally hold the ball with no shot clock right for a minute. Let this run down. You call a timeout. You hold for last shot. And if Archbishop Wood doesn't come, come out, out to guard. Looks like they're going to let him play it out. Then Gidney doesn't even really need to. Take a timeout until I think he's he stalls the ball. Ready. He calls a timeout with maybe, you know, 10, 15 seconds left. Draws up the play. Let him play out. Now Delaney Finnegan comes out, but still won't even start the five second count. Oh, it's a deep three. It's oh. good. 
Olivia Bocella. 15 seconds left. And now Lance Del Capa can think about fouling up three. A timeout That's a big is time shot at the end of the beginning. A coming out party for Olivia Bocella. She was the star of the semifinal, and she's got that crowd in a frenzy. Yes. She's got the crowd going crazy. Fifteen points for Olivia Bocella. She's got four of five from three. What a game for her. What a Each game. one longer than the last. NBA range, why not? Listen, I told you, she's not afraid to let it go. You have to guard her. That's a big shot. Because if that doesn't go, you're thinking, <laughs> why <laughs> yes. did you take that? Wood has the last shot at that point. But if you're feeling it, let it fly. You know, it's one of those things as a coach we talked about. You're over there going, oh, man, she puts it in, you're like, great shot. You miss it, you know, they get the rebound, they go a chance to score. It's one of those things you take a chance on. She's feeling it. Okay, foul up three, yes or no? Nope, the worst that can happen is goes to overtime. I do think they'll foul at some point, though. They've I think only you committed foul. five. They three. I think you let some time run off the clock. You foul, foul, yep. and then you let it play out. Because they have one to give. Yep. Five team fouls. Got a couple seconds, go. Let it play out. Ava Renninger down to seven. Only now thing they I can give do the is foul. tie it. Down to two seconds. That was halfway down. And Lansdale Catholic wins the Catholic League Championship for the first time in school history. Olivia Bacella, the hero. Yes, that's a big time shot right there. That's also for Lansdale, first time. You won't see a better high school basketball game this year. What a finish. Bacella, the hero, 15 points, and the game winner in the biggest moments. Eric Gidney gets his first Catholic League title in his fifth year as head coach. And boy, does it feel like this program will be here for a while. Yes, like I said, they have some young, um, young ones on their bench as well. You know, like I said, he doesn't go deep into his bench. He does have some young players. It's a hard fought game by both teams. They did a tremendous job. Here's another look at the game winner. Pure. Doesn't get any better than that for, for uh, a kid. Hitting that big time three, something she'll remember the rest of her life. And this was the heave by Archbishop Wood. It was it's a close. great, who nearly went down. Wouldn't call it a high percentage look, but she put it on the rim. That's all you can ask. Olivia Bacella just a junior at five foot five and a Catholic League legend already. Yes. Eric Gidney embracing some of his friends and family there on the sideline, and that's what everybody plays for. The Philadelphia hubcap. Catholic League hubcap. I know you've got your fair share of those yes. on the boys' side and on the girls' side. And it's the moment you live for right here. Like I said, there's no better league in the country to be able to play in front of a crowd like this. I think the Catholic League does a really good job of putting our young women, young men in front of the best atmosphere there is in high school basketball. No more tickets available for tonight. It was sold out and the stands show it. There's not many places to sit here and they're gonna try to jam a few more in tonight before the boys game. But there's the happy bunch. And that, I think, is the entire Lansdale Catholic yes. School there. <laughs> they are all the way up. <laughs> you know, big congrats to Lansdale and Coach for what he's done. He's done a tremendous job over there. Um, and a congrats to, you know, Archbishop Will getting here again. Um, and again, hats off to Lansdale Catholic uh, winning the PCL. And the next part of the proceedings here, I know you know this well. If you can get up on the ladder and cut down a piece of the nylon, what's that feeling like? It's a good feeling. Like I said, you get up there, you look around. I'll be honest, when you're when you're on the court, right, it's hard to see what's going on around because there's not much you can see because of these lights that just shine right on the court. And you get up on that that ladder. I think that's what every young lady in the Catholic League, you know, lives for. You know, in that moment um, of cutting down this net right here, and it's something everyone talks about when we start our season. 
Um, there's nothing better than this feeling right here. We talked about it in the early stages of this contest. This was a rematch of the 4A state championship game at the PIAA level last year. Archbishop Wood and Mike McDonald led by Ryan Allen and Bree Bowen, they won that. They handed off the reins to the next set of Archbishop Wood Lady Vikings. Allie Fleming, that was a big loss for them. But they hung in there and they played an incredible game tonight and throughout the year. But too much Gabby Casey, yes. who was the first up on the ladder, the Catholic League MVP. Yep. She's going to do big things at St. Joe's. I'm excited to see her play at the next level. And, um, you know, she's, she's a great young lady, too, you know, on and off the court. So she's a great role model. And I think, like I said, she's going to do big things there. And I think everyone looks forward to seeing her play. And she really doesn't force anything. She doesn't. I mean, she scores 21 points a game. She's she lets the forced. flow come to her. She really does. That's Elena Ciccicelli. 5-2 senior. What a way to go out as a senior. Yes. I'm telling you, there's no better moment than right there. Where does the net end up? If you're a player, or in your case, a coach, <laughs> I know you were a player too, and I'm sure yes. I've cut a net or two in your day as a player. But So the net the net ends up with the trophy in the trophy case. You put it right on, that, uh, right on the hook cap. Jada Helm, we talked a lot about her. A transfer from Abington, and we saw her take a charge, I believe, today. She came in as fifth in the country in charges taken. Eric Gidney just started taking that stat and monitoring it this year. Jada Helm was the reason why. And there is Olivia Bacella. Big shot. Big shot live. I think we might <laughs> have to shot start live. trademarking that. <laughs> That's Allie a Johns, shot. a 5'9 senior. She'll cut the net next. There are not many people in the country, really, that can say that they hit a game winner from NBA range on a <laughs> venue like this. Yes, in a game like this. Uh-huh. Nadia Yamola. She really was important early on. Had a couple of buckets, including the opening three of the game. And I think she's a young lady that kind of does it all. She's uh, one of those young ladies that I don't think you see too much into the stat sheets, but she does a lot for Lansdale to keep them alive. Sanaya. Just a sophomore. Get used to her, Philadelphia yes. Catholic League fans, and, and non-Catholic League fans that want other teams <laughs> to win the state championship. It's going to be tough as long as she's at the helm here. She'll be playing Division I basketball in just Absolutely. a few years. This is sophomore Janelle Carr, six foot one, good size there. You think as some of these seniors maybe make their way on to the college level, that she'll start to get some serious playing time here at Lansdale Catholic. Aubrey. Aubrey Mobley, just a freshman. Yes, I said he's got some young ones on the bench. I think will be good for the future. That's Casey Dvorak, also a freshman. Lansdale Catholic improves to 23 and two on the year. So have a chance to play for a district title and represent the Philadelphia Catholic League in the PIAA playoffs. Yes, they're in our 4A, so we have a chance to see each other. Isabella Allen cutting down the net now. I see, so this wasn't just a color commentary exercise, <laughs> but a scouting mission as well, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now some of the assistants will get their turn. I want to thank you as well, Andrea, for thank taking for the time me. to do this. And I think very creative to the broadcast, taking us inside the minds of the coaches and the players. And there's no better representative for the women's and the girls' game of basketball than you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Big fan of what you have done at Newman Garetti for so many years. It's not often I get to broadcast with a national Naismith <laughs> Coach of the Year. So Thank it's, you. It's special. And, of course, you have a vested interest in the next contest as well. 
Yes, Newman Gretty, our Newman Gretty boys are playing. Like I said to you earlier, is probably the one of the most prestigious um, matchups here between Roman and Newman Gretty. And of course, we want to see our boys bring it back to Newman. The assistants for Eric Gidney, Trinell Clements, Miley Irwin, Brady Wassell, and here he is, Eric Gidney, to do the honors. <laughs> Can't cut that thing fast enough. <laughs> there it is. Lansdowne Catholic, a very deserving 2022-2023 Philadelphia Catholic League champion. Dreams were made here at the Palestra, and Lansdale Catholic, they'll have these memories to look back upon for the rest of their lives. A hubcap comes to Lansdale, and a state run is just beginning. I want to thank my partner, Andrea Peterson. I want to thank the entire Penn Sports Network crew that helped us with the broadcast production. Sports Fan Base Network for helping to put this onto the platform so that you can all watch it at home. For the entire crew here, my name is Bob Long saying so long for now. We'll be back in just about a half hour or so as Roman Catholic takes on Newman Garetti in the boys basketball title. We can only hope that that game will be the contest that this one was here today. Congratulations to Lansdale Catholic, the Lady Crusaders, and we'll bid you adieu with the big shot by Olivia Bacella.